Hey, hey, hey. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tembo Way. Uh, we've had some technical difficulties, but we're here, we're back, we're getting it. So, as I've said before in previous videos, I am Paul, one of the co-founders of the Tembo Way, and today we're so lucky to have May Lynn. May Lynn, introduce yourself, please. I'm Mei Lin. I am currently a special education teacher, but I am actually a math and Spanish teacher, and I'm so excited to share some of my knowledge with you all this evening. I also think that makes her more than qualified for today's discussion. So, with that being said, and uh, no further ado, let's get on it. So, today's topic is about the non-traditional student and what that means. So, straight off the bat, we have to give a definition I think, to the non-traditional student. So, do, do you have a definition? It, it goes. All right, so, yours. I would define the non-traditional student as anybody who goes through the schooling process and doesn't do the four-year plug and chug, meaning you graduate high school, you go to college for four years, you graduate, and you're done. The four-year plug and chug. So, anybody who's outside of that system... I'd consider it to be non-traditional. Do you have any additions to that? Um, I had previously talked to you and I said that someone who had a problem or is not traditional in the sense getting into college. So like we usually see on TV, like parents help you with everything. Your school is an ideal setting mm -hmm. to prepare you with the FAFSA, everything, explanations for path FAFSA, this, that, and bag of chips, all that to get into college. It's an easy, smooth transition, but for a lot of people it's not. For me it wasn't. So that would make you non-traditional as well. Absolutely, and that's actually very common. I think another one, and I've mentioned it before, and I'll mention it again. Uh, non-traditional students can also they there's a giant array of who could be, but I will say I will say um, so. Some more common ones can be military members who've gone off and served and come back to join school after at an older age or there are students who graduate high school early and they come to college at 16 or 17 um she was one of those come to college at an earlier age than normal okay normal and they you know what else? Oh, yeah. sorry go ahead no, no, no go ahead the students who are in college and something traumatic happens, like a death of a family yes. or a car accident, right. and they have to leave for a semester or some time. That's a little personal. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that makes you non-traditional. And being non-traditional is okay. Yeah. It, is, it is normal, okay? That's the question I was going to ask. Is it normal or not normal to be non-traditional? Normal, I think, is in the eye of the beholder, but according to the... Um, According to the definition I gave earlier, it would make it not normal. However, not everything in this world is normal. Not everything in this world works on a pre-made plan, right? Mm -hmm. Every single person has their own race to run. Every single person is set out on a different journey. So, if your journey is non-traditional, quote-unquote, go for it. If it's not, if, it, if you're in the four-year plug-and-chug path of life, go for it, right? But... Here's the thing. Here's the thing. First of all, what would you say, Maylin, right? Because mm -hmm. you're, you're in the field. You understand what people are doing. So what would you say are some struggles, if you will, of being a non-traditional student? What made me non-traditional was what I said it was difficult for me to get, like, a smooth transition into college. Mm -hmm. So I come from a family where both my parents, when I was going to start college were undocumented undocumented immigrants okay. and so they didn't know the FAFSA thing I couldn't really get help from other people because you know putting my parents information out there is not a thing and um, so filling all that stuff out when FAFSA would come out with errors and I was like freaking out and crying <laughs> oh, what you, gotta, you gotta go make a correction <laughs> and then it takes like three business days for you to get your stuff back absolutely all um, that non-traditional. Also, my career was longer. I didn't. Absolutely. I wasn't in college for four and, for an, four years. I was in college for four and a half because uh -huh. I had like almost three majors type okay. of thing. Okay, right. So all that. That's wild. Triple majors. Sure. That's amazing. Um. So, here's here's a question. Do you think going back? Hold on. First of all, going back, would you, Maylin, change anything? Right. 
from being the, because you know, your program obviously is longer than most programs. Mm -hmm. Most programs you're doing in three and a half, four years, right? Five and a half, six semesters, is it? Five and a half, however many semesters it takes, right? Eight, my goodness. But in that six and seven and a half, eight semester gap, that's how long most programs take. I think yours is what, 10? Or so? Nine? No, it's supposed to be 10. I shortened it because I did some summer. So. She's amazing like yeah. that. Learning how to leverage <laughs> your time. That is definitely something that's so important to take on. Whether or not you're traditional or non traditional, it is so important to learn how to leverage your time. But let's not get into that right now. Hello, I want to say hello to Moses. Welcome. Thank you for watching with us. So, the struggles is, you know, some, some of these programs are longer, some of them are shorter. So, how do you, first of all, how do you as a student, right? So there's a student coming in or one of your students comes in and they're going to be finishing high school and you're like, how do I, as a student, understand what I'm about to tackle in college, right? Because here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing, guys. If you, if you, if you went to a school that you were lucky enough that prepared you and they went above and beyond to get you ready and you had parents and siblings and teachers and pastors and I don't know what who pour themselves into you to get you to a place where you need to be amazing right there's a likely chance that you probably know what's going on you probably know what you want to do you probably understand who you are now I'm not saying that's not expected of students who don't have that available to them because there's remarkable human beings out there and some people don't need the guidance of others to understand that they can achieve everything right and I'm so I'm so lucky. See, she's one of those people <laughs> who doesn't need the guidance of others to understand that she could achieve. And if she has time, I, I hope she shares how she went through college and her whole experience and like whatever be felt like came before her to like try and uh, stop her. But she she did not let anything stop her. Anyway, um, I want to kind of you know tap tap into the students that okay they don't have that stuff available to them. They they don't have guidance counselors who are there at their beck and call. They don't have um, access to resources or they don't have like after school programs that are set up mm -hmm. for their own success. So how do these students, right? How do these students identify where they stand as traditional or non-traditional? Here's why, because, because I wanna say what's up to Alwain. What's up big guy? Um, but how do they identify where they uh, stand? How did they come into this thinking, all right, you know what? Maybe I should take a year off between high school and, and college, or maybe I'm already in my first or second year of college, and maybe I need to take a year off and go, I don't know, to the Mauritius Islands, right? I really hope that's a place. <laughs> but they go off to some island doing who knows what, and they just need time to discover themselves. How does a student, right, and you're the one who has a lot more exposure to this, how does a student then identify, okay, there's certain things I need to do to understand. This is what I need to do uh, as a traditional student. Or there's certain things I need to do to understand that, ooh, I'm not ready. I'm not in the game. I'm not, I'm not ready to tackle college, because college is a game, right? And you have to understand how to play the game of college. Not everybody has that blueprint. Not everybody has that stuff set before them. They don't have people that, oh, that's amazing. The Mauritius Islands are definitely a place. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Alwyn. Um, not everybody has that blueprint to tell them, all right, boom, this is what you need to do. So, so what do they need to do? It depends on the student. So I wouldn't okay. suggest taking a break off for everyone okay. because from what I've seen before, some of my friends decided to do that. And then what happened is that the break just elongated and they never went back to school or they, they never figured out what it was that they wanted to do. Sometimes uh -huh. emerging yourself into the situation makes you find the solution. But sometimes you need the break. Let's say for money reasons, you know? Okay. You just need the break to work and get you through one semester mm -hmm. or something like that. You don't want to have those loans, so you're just extending it. For me, taking a break was not an option because I had the passion and I had the drive to succeed. And if I were to take a break, it doesn't matter uh, 
the money didn't matter. I was like, I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna figure it out while I'm there, but it's happening. I actually went to college and I wasn't even financially cleared. I didn't have everything ready, but mm-hmm. I was like, you know what? We're gonna figure out when I'm there okay. because I'm going to college. So it depends. I think it's all a thing of passion. If you really wanna do this and you wanna do it now, then you can do it and things will just fall into place. You'll work three jobs if you have to, but you'll get it done. Some people just need a time to think about it. What mm-hmm. is it that I wanna do? Do I wanna make this investment right now? Do I need to build myself up for it a little more? But it's a really fine line. If you wanna to go to college, you need to do it in a timely manner so that your passion and your drive is still there and you don't get sucked into the working world mm-hmm. that can kind of just glue you there. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you think it's easy to, to burn out in that process? Like in my process, like okay. coming to yeah. college and having to work, yeah, yeah I, it's really easy. I mean, it depends. Also, I'm in a different situation because, again, my parents were immigrants, and yeah. so that's kind of expected from like Caribbean culture. Uh-huh. Like, you go to college, like Moses was telling us earlier, yeah. you make money and you come help us. You know, I, I think, <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, and we'll get, we'll get to that in a second. I do think, I do think, as an immigrant myself and the child of immigrants, I really do think that we might actually be at an advantage. <laughs> no, seriously, we might be at an advantage when it comes to, and I'm not, okay, not, this is not to say that other people don't have a work ethic that is hard. I'm just going to say that for those who have tougher circumstances growing up, okay, those that have tougher circumstances, I do think that Work ethic almost, for the most part, there's a, there's a larger drive. Mm-hmm. You know, I need to work hard. I need to succeed. I need to do this because my, this, the need to do this is literally dependent upon your own reality, your own your success, family's expectations. your family's expectations. And not only that, not only that, I want to say hello to Carl, not only that, but your own expectations because in order for you to get to step two, step three, you need to be able to kill step one. You know, you need to be able to just get into it and be like, all right, boom, 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 nonstop. And you've seen this. You've and seen I've this. seen this. Your family, for example, my mom was a psychologist. My dad was a chef. He mm-hmm. was almost done with his accounting. And they came here to the States, worked as factory workers. My mom was a babysitter. Why? So that we could have an education and then not take advantage of that. Do you know how angry my parents would be? <laughs> my goodness. My goodness. And this is where we kind of, oh, here's a question. So this is where we kind of like, Dive into it. So you talk. We were talking about um, stepping out, and maybe I need to take time off to work, mm-hmm. right? So Moses posted a question here saying, "Do you think that a year off or a couple of months that a student will take um, will cause them, if I'm reading this correctly, to lose track or lose their mindset of going back and starting college instead of going straight out of high school, right? So meaning." And Moses, I might need you to re-type that question to better, get a better understanding of it. But do I think that them taking that year off is going to hold them back? Okay, so now that's a very valid question. It's possible that a student taking a year off between high school and college can throw them off track. A multitude of things can happen. They can find a job that pays really well and they really enjoy it. They might just be like, college is not for me and they want to travel the world. That's fine. But I do think... How, okay, so here, let me ask this. How do we, or how does the student avoid that? So in the last video I talked about, it's all about the mindset, right? There has to be a mindset shift. If you change how you think, you will change how you act. So if you go into your off aware of why you're taking it. So it's one thing to go into, go, go into that year off and be like, I just need a year off because I don't want to do college. But why? Why is it that you don't want to jump into college? Why is it that you don't want to jump into the workforce? Do you understand that? There has to be a reason behind the why. Okay? Now, once you've understood the why, then you can jump into it. If you have a why, I really truly believe then that you're not going to get caught up in not going to college or not joining the workforce. Right? If, if you're there like, okay, I'm here to fully understand myself because it's important. Right? So you can, you can go into college and you don't really know what your passions are. You don't really know what you like to do. You don't know what your hobbies could be. And then two years down the road, you change majors because suddenly you realize, you know what? 
Finance is not for me, and instead I want to do zoology, okay? Two totally different things, but there's a possibility that lies where had you taken that year off, you might have had the opportunity to fully discover who you are, fully discover your passion for animals. But on the other hand, okay. maybe being in college and seeing that career there in your face right. changed. So for example, my sister, mm -hmm. she was studying fashion merchandising. Okay. And one of her required like gen ed classes was, was accounting. Okay. She was like, oh, and then while she's in this accounting class, Everything came easy to her. She was like the top, like all the other accounting majors were scoring mm -hmm. less than she was. She was scoring hundreds on everything and she was loving it. She's like, wait, hold on, let me reconsider. Okay. And now she's an accountant and she's actually studying her, her CPA exam and she's doing really well. Good luck so to you. So being in college uh -huh. and going through the courses okay. and that all just played out so that she could find her career. I would say be careful to those people that take the year off and get too comfortable. I feel like getting too, if you know you want to yes. come back to college, getting too comfortable in that McDonald's job or wherever you're working, yeah. or if it's an engineering factor or whatever you are, getting too comfortable there, that's where you have to check yourself. Because Absolutely. you do have long-term goals Absolutely. that you need to start working on now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I love that you shared that. Do not get too comfortable in a place that is not your ultimate goal, right? If you're trying to go from point A to point B and you stop at point A prime, that's not your destination. That is, that is not where you're headed. And you have to make sure that you continually drive yourself. You have to make sure that you surround yourself with people who will remind you, mm -hmm. hey man, this is where we're going. This is where we're headed. This is what we're trying to do. And even a circle of friends of people who have the same goals as you. Um, surround yourself with people who are in college so that you don't feel like this is this thing that's so hard to do and you don't know anyone who's doing it. But having Absolutely. those friends who are going through it with you, mm -hmm. as a math major, having those friends that stay up and struggle with you yes. really makes you go through it and helps you out. Absolutely. And I, you know, I think the saying goes, misery loves company. But I'll flip that and say, Struggle understands struggle, and through that, success will come. So, if you're able to align yourself with like-minded individuals, whether that's in school or even during that time off, right? If you're able to align yourself with like-minded individuals who understand what you're doing, and you guys all are driven, I'm telling you, you'll take over the world. There was another question that was posted here. Um, asking, so after a break, how does a student go back to school? Simple. You do it. <laughs> what do you mean? It might be tough. You do it. You suck it up and you do it. All right. No, in all seriousness, it might be, it might be hard uh, readjusting back in mm -hmm. from, if you're in the workforce, back into the academic setting. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that doesn't just have to be as soon as 18. You could be 40. There's people that are going back to school at 40, 50, 30. And it's difficult. And at that point, you might have children. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, here's the crazy part, right? Because, because you're that non-traditional student, then how does it become different? Let's talk about an age gap. So, you, as a non-traditional student, as an NTS, quote me, might be younger than everybody in your class. That's, that's not as common as the other side, where you're older. Mm -hmm. But what advantages or disadvantages does that, does that play? Um, I think one of them, if you're older, if you're older, I'd like to think that you're a lot more focused, mm -hmm. right? You know Especially if you have children. You know what you're doing. doing. I'm here because I need to get this stuff done. I need to get this ish done, right? I got kids at home. I have goals I'm trying to attain. I know who I am, all right? So if I'm 26, 27, 30, 35, 40, I'm here with a purpose. Mm -hmm. I'm working harder than everybody else. And here's the difference. I think for them, that becomes an advantage. The disadvantage is that Everybody else is younger, so everybody else might not think the same way that they're And they get frustrated. Thinking. And I they might get actually... frustrated. They might get frustrated. There's this, um, so there, and this is a little, like, segue. So there's this new show that came out recently called Grownish. And in it, um, I've noticed there's a different dynamic between how I view it and how younger people view it. To me, I look at it, and I'm like, oh, it's not my cup of tea. And younger people see it, and they're like, we get it. But I've realized... Over time, and you know, I was discussing with one of my colleagues, and they said that we're frustrated by it because we see the younger mindset in the show, right? 
So these are kids that are 18 coming out of high school. For, so for them, this is normal. This is what's happening. But to us, it's like, yo, I've been through that life process. I've been through this. I've been through that. Why are you making these decisions? Mm -hmm. So it's frustrating me because I'm like, just avoid that pain. Avoid that struggle. Avoid those problems. But that's just it. So as an older student, one can assume that, like you said, you just it's easy to get frustrated. It's very easy because... Maybe not every student in the class with you is thinking the way you're thinking. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're not, you know, it could be tiny stuff like arranging late night group meetings at like 10.45 at night and you're trying to be home at night and feed the kids and, you know, watch Dancing with the Stars and study. I, I don't know what it is that people do at night. I just open my books. But <laughs> the other part about it is um, maybe maybe as a younger student, you don't quite fit in, mm -hmm. right? Because you're, you're the odd or not. You, you're coming in and you're just like, I am 16 and... I'm coming in, I'm 16, and everybody in class is 18, 19, 20, and I have nothing in common with these human beings except the textbook and the teacher. Mm -hmm. So then how can I be able to build that community of that superstar five-person team? How can I build that up if I don't relate with them? It's very difficult, and that's a disadvantage. The advantage of that is you are killing the game at 16. You are in here just... <laughs> Getting after it, and you are ahead of the curve. And you have less concerns. And you have less worries. concerns and less worries, and life is but a bliss rainbow, right? But that's okay. The point is, how does one go back into going back to school? You just do it. And here's the thing if you feel discouraged, all right, so whoever watches this, if you feel discouraged, honestly, shoot me a message. Shoot, shoot anybody on mes a message, either personally, anybody in Tembo. Mail in, shoot her a message. Shoot anybody a message and let them be your support system. It's not impossible. It can be hard, but it's not impossible. So, um, Danley wrote that she took a year off after she graduated high school and she kind of regrets it. And Danley, that's very normal. It's, it's normal. That can, that can happen, you know? It's all about going through that life experience and understanding. Now, here's the difference. Now, you get to have the perspective where if somebody comes to you and says, should I take a year off? You get to say, you know what, I went through that process, I did it, and this is how it worked for me. You get to have the perspective that maybe it doesn't work all the time, whereas somebody else could have done it, and they're like, yo, it worked for me. You can be able to share with them the positives and the neg negatives you know of that. If you do take a year off, um, be weary that it might set you back. So a lot, I was a TA for like a remedial math course, and a lot of my students were actually older students, or people who had taken breaks, and because you have that gap from high school to college, you don't remember that math anymore. And you need to have a certain level to be able to graduate. And I've seen people about to graduate and they couldn't graduate because they couldn't pass the remedial math course. So being, you have to be careful while you're in that situation to keep, that when you come back, it's gonna be difficult to get back in the game. You Absolutely. might forget things with the time of not practice because school is all practice and just Absolutely, and especially with time you take off. Yeah. The more time you take off, the less you'll remember. The re less you'll remember, and the harder it will be to get back. So Alan kind of wrote out that for him, the difference was between undergrad and grad. He had about five years in between, and if I'm reading this correctly, he couldn't imagine what it's like to be in high schooler. But it keep it the same, where it might have been a lot more difficult for him to go through that because it's five whole years in the workforce. Mm -hmm. And now you're reverting from, I am getting a check, I am getting paid, I'm doing all this, to nothing, right? You're going from stability back into the stress and everything of school. Not saying that the workforce isn't stressful, but you know, school's a, different, school's a different level of stress. <laughs> but kind of going through that there. So thank you for sharing that. But it all depends also just how much time you take off. The more time you take off, I think, the harder it will be, right? Um, now... Would it be recommended, would it be recommended for a student to take that time off to become a non-traditional student? Would you recommend that? It depends on the student. If I, typically, well as a teacher I can see the students that I know they have good intentions to take the time off and I know that even if they took the time off they still have that passion and they have that desire to go to college. And that desire is so strong that I know they'll always go back to it. But there are those other students that really need that push, like, uh-uh, honey, 
you go to college now or you are never going <laughs> to go to college. This. Just take this time, this break that we're giving you, this transition where people are actually pushing you. Because the reality is, mm -hmm. if you do take that break, now you have no one to push you to go back to college. Mm -hmm. In high school, you have those teachers. You have the guidance counselor. Absolutely. You're expected to go to college. And it's a smoother transition. Absolutely. Now you started the workforce and now I'm working. And now all of a sudden I want to make this decision. Well, now I have to quit a job. Now I have to figure all this out. And I don't really have the support that I have high schooler would have because now I've given myself a little more stability mm -hmm. so it's a challenge I also want to add on to that that the other side of it so what I recommend it um, kind of with mailing on this one it really depends on the person um, just how you want to look at it if you think it's for you now here's the other part right so I always want to talk about risk don't let the fear of something hold you back from trying it if you in your gut feel I need to take time off. I need to discover who I am. I'm not ready for this. Then by all means, step back and do it. Step back and enjoy yourself. Step back and just kind of prepare yourself to get into it. Because the last thing I'd want for you is you come into this whole game unprepared mentally. You come into this whole game unprepared physically, emotionally. I don't want that. I'd rather you take that time off in that scenario and... Figure all that out first, and then you come into it prepared and ready to go and get after it and get after it and get after it. Right? I'd also add make sure that if you're going to take that break, you know how you're going to prepare yourself. Absolutely. You can't just sit there and expect the world to prepare you. You have to actually work for that. And all it depends on like the stuff you decide to carry on during that time as well. Um, be it working, if you want to get a job and you know, stack the bag during that period of time, absolutely do that. If you want to travel the world and have an epiphany and a philosophical like meeting point about who I was and who I can be, do that. Um, but do not, the only thing I'd say don't do is waste the time away. Don't waste the time away because time is literally the only commodity we cannot get back. We can make up anything. We can make up money, but we cannot make up time. Once time is gone, time is gone. That's it. We're done. We're through it. So use that time wisely. Learn how to leverage it. Learn how to leverage your mental space. Learn how to leverage the things you focus on. Learn how to structure and balance your life during the process of college while you're taking that time off if you're not going to do it. All of that, and most importantly, have an execution plan. That's so important. Have an execution plan. If you're able to write out, honestly, if you're able to write out, sit down and just put it on pencil and paper and be like, this is where I'm going, this is where I am, and this is where I want to be. Those three things. Right? Where I'm going, where I am, and where I want to be. Write those things out. Give yourself and a that, time limit. And become your time limit to, oh. Where I want to be in five years, I want to be in grad school. I want to have a doctor's degree before I'm 30. Things like that. Give yourself time limits. It's good to have these goals because once you have them written out, it's so much easier to achieve them because you mm -hmm. see them on paper. And then, and he, he, here's, a, here's a tiny tidbit of like free advice I'll give you all right now. With those goals, share those goals. Not, you don't have to share everything, but share some of those goals with your closest allies, mm -hmm. uh, with your closest friends. Why? Because you're that much more accountable when it comes to having to achieve them. Because if you keep it to yourself, if, 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 if you keep it to yourself and don't achieve that goal, guess who doesn't know? Guess who's the only person who knows that you didn't achieve it? Yeah. Me. You. If, if I have a goal and I tell Maylin, yo, in, in a month, I want to be, I don't know what, at a weight goal, right? If I want to be at 230, if I don't hit 230 in a month, guess what Mei Lin's going to say to me? Hey, remember a month ago when you said... Uh, <laughs> and I would be really annoying about you it, You know? Too. Persistent. Do better. <laughs> She's very annoying. Persistently telling me, boom, 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 get after it. That, that's so important. And you also have to have people that are willing to tell you the truth. Willing to tell you, all right, this is where you are right now. This is where you told me you wanted to be, and this is where you're going. This is where we're going. So let's ride. Anyway, is there anything you want to add? Nope. We're out of time. Awesome. So thank you so much for tuning in. Like, share, subscribe. I don't know. Tell your grandmother. Tell everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. If there's any questions you guys have, post them in the comments. Send us a message. Call us. Send us a pigeon. I don't know. Do anything you got to do. But most of all, continue being you. 
Temple's all about these four things. Finding purpose, establishing order, and achieving excellence through a community. That's all we're about. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be awesome, be great, and have a splendid rest of the day.